and welcome to the final Traxxas success story webinar series with American company Bush Brothers. I'm joined today by... Hello, my name is Mike Yost. I am the president of Mesa International. Mesa is a 24-year-old not-for-profit industry association that's focused on finding the business value at the intersection of where manufacturing meets IT. Hello, my name is Dave Ray. I'm the Vice President for Operations here at Parsec Automation. We are the supplier for Traxxas, a leading operations management and manufacturing execution software. Hello, my name is Travis Tomaszewski. I'm an Operations Area Manager at Bush Brothers & Company. Uh, we are a producer of baked beans, and we have been using the Traxxas software for about five years now. And I'm Catherine Gutierrez, Director of Client and Partner Relations here at Parsec. For this last episode, we will be focusing on quality, compliance, and next steps. Mike, from your view, I know that compliance is always changing and evolving. As regulations become more strict, can you share with us how organizations can help balance customer preference with compliance? Yeah, this is straight out of the Mesa handbook. Um, you know, we, we really see it as you know, a focus on investing in your, in your operations that you can make your operations a responsive, reliable asset in you know, your overall supply chain and your business. There are still too many companies out there that look at manufacturing like it's a black box where you put things in one end and get stuff out the other. Uh, and they really miss the chance to innovate and differentiate themselves through their production capabilities and manage things like customer preference and compliance. And you know, these challenges the manufacturers face, like regulations, are not going to go away. They continue to get more strict. Consumers continue to be more discerning and expect more, uh, and that puts pressure back on the manufacturer. So companies need to have the tools in place in their production operations to meet those challenges today, as well as whatever challenges come around the next corner. Absolutely, and one of the important pieces of that type of compliance is being able to task the right people to do the right jobs at the right time. Travis, from your perspective, uh, a user of Traxxas, can you help share how Traxxas has allowed you to manage tasks and the process that you use to do that? Yeah, we use our tasks are pretty much all of our quality checks. Uh, we, we've kind of started down the road of this. I shouldn't say all of our quality checks. We've, we've done a few of them so far, and we're hoping to expand those into other parts of the business as well. But really, Traxxas manages those for us and notifies our operators through light bars or through other um, notification methods when tasks are due. It then takes all that data and it stores it into an online database, which allows us to be able to easily search through that data and know if there's been any problems with it. Kind of along that same line, Traxxas is available, or some options are available to when there are issues notify key decision makers and it allows them to at least be aware of what's happening so that they can go out and you know seek more information from the operators to be able to produce a safe quality product that we that we want to provide to our customers it also allows us to be able to to graph some of our data in SDC charts and we use this especially on our HACCP program to be able to graph those critical checks and know where there is variability in our process that's great. Dave, from your perspective, speaking of HACCP, have you seen with other clients how real-time notifications and or with Bush enabled them to more effectively deal with exceptions recorded from HACCP and other quality checks? You know, notifications on the one hand can be a boon because people are not always tethered to computers and screens, even with the proliferation of handheld devices. So being able to notify people, not just about deviations and exceptions, but also when things need to happen um, can be pretty powerful. There's the other end of the spectrum where people can uh, suffer from death by notification, too many alerts, too many alarms. So I think both with Bush and with other clients, Sometimes it's not so much about the value of real-time notifications, but exactly what are they being notified about and being able to bring that down to the really pertinent exceptions and conditions that require somebody's attention. So not just to spawn off alerts and alarms all day long because people become desensitized to those, but be able to manage specifically what you're going to uh, try to bring to somebody's attention, whether it's 
in a notification or a text message or some of the, uh, the, the color-coded alerts that can show up on a operator screen or on a dashboard, that I think becomes a, a little bit more of the, the important part of that process to consider in getting the implementation right. That makes sense. And I think it's important for us to dive a little further into quality. Travis, from your perspective, how has quality management improved since implementing Traxxas? Well, kind of like Dave mentioned, it gets the right information to the right people at the right time and allows them to make the decisions and kind of takes that stress away from the operators so that they don't have to make it on, on an island. It takes the guesswork out of our adjustments that we make with the SPC charting that's, that's available through the Traxxas software we can adjust that stuff really kind of on the fly to, to be able to make sure our process stays in control and we are going to continue to ensure the excellent product quality that we want to give to all of our customers. SPC and talking with, with our quality manager is, is the absolute largest upgrade for us with the Traxxas. Uh, it allows us to make the decisions quickly and kind of just gives our operators and our management teams greater confidence in the decisions that we are making. So you mentioned that you're using that SPC functionality in Traxxas. Can you tell us a little bit about how it's reduced variability? Well, kind of like I said, we, we, we are able to make decisions more quickly. So when a quality check is done and we find it to be a little more out on the edges of our capability charts, we can go in and make a make a, a change to the system very quickly, uh, which is which allows us to ensure that variability reduces over time. So we use it for sensory data. We use it for bean fill at, the, at our fillers, uh, and that that data is con constantly being sent out to our quality department and operations leadership to make sure that everything is staying kind of in spec. So as we've been able to grow that system, we've been able to change things quicker and and make sure that there's less variability in our in our final products. Great. Dave, from your perspective, what other considerations are important with quality in SPC? You know, it's interesting. Travis was talking a little bit there about SPC allowing them to to make some better decisions and see variability closer to real time. Many companies when they start looking at statistical process control and certain other quality systems they may look at a solution that isn't tethered or tightly coupled with the manufacturing process and with operations. Uh, personally, I think some of the value that Bush Brothers and other manufacturers that are using Traxxas have seen is that that SPC information, beyond just the control chart of whatever the metric or the attribute of the value is, can be contextualized with things about production. And more importantly, as that SPC data is collected, the different measurements and so forth, there are decision rules that can be based not just on the data itself, but on the product that is running, maybe based on the production schedule, and really helps uh, provide something that is meaningful in real time. Some of those rules may be different depending upon what's going on in production. So rather than identifying variability after the fact, after the production run, looking at a complete data set, they're able to get a little bit more uh, of that real-time aspect from SPC because it's incorporated in a system that's connected to their process. Uh, you know, Travis, we've talked a little bit here about SPC, about quality, collecting uptime and downtime from the process. Uh, we're already covering a lot of different areas where we're collecting data about what happened during production. Uh, if we look ahead a little bit in terms of possible areas that Traxxas can be leveraged in the future, we know that with the advent of certain new regulations in the food and beverage industry, that being able to keep electronic production records, whether it's for traceability on materials, whether it's for being able to have accurate reporting back to uh, the FDA or other agencies, is becoming a little bit more critical and talked about. Just from your perspective, even though you're not using Traxxas right now as an electronic production record solution, what type of advantages would you see using Traxxas in, in that regard versus more traditional paper-based records? Well, kind of like uh, I alluded to a little earlier, all checks would be documented in the same location uh, and just gives us further visibility into our process. It also allows us to be able to search the data and know when things kind of went out of control or hopefully we catch them before they even go out of control. But it gives us timely data review 
we can review it immediately instead of waiting until the end of the shift or the end of the day. And ultimately, we could utilize it for workflows. We could we could send the data from our first quality review to an operations review to make sure that all of the data on the checks are as accurate and, and as filled in as it should be. There's that ease of access that, that you don't have with the paper-based records that the Traxxas does provide. You can go in and just report anything out that you really want to. It's very timely. It's, it's immediately at the end of the shift or immediately after the check is done, really. So the visibility, what we're kind of hoping to get out of electronic records when we get there. So yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of value in having that online and just for us it's it's really the ease of access. Travis, you talked a little bit about future functionality within Traxis and potential plans or interests in areas that maybe you might expand into later on. Does Bush Brothers have any plans to expand Traxis to any of its other facilities or into other functionality of the software? Right now we are, we're actually using it at both of our facilities. Our facility here in Augusta uses it a little bit differently than our Chestnut Hill sister plant down in Tennessee. So there is some ideas for the, the Tennessee plant to kind of grow the, their use of Traxxas and hopefully be able to use the data for a little bit more decision making and uh, just have their insight into what's going on in their process. So we don't have any other facilities to expand into but we would like to start kind of doing some different things with the software. Right now we're using an implementation that is a, a continuous operation implementation. We have a few parts of our process that are more batch focused that we would like to get a little bit further down the road, further insight into what's happening in those processes by using some of the batching software that Traxxas has available. We would also like to kind of have more specific down to the equipment OEE. Right now we kind of have an overall production line OEE and we don't get into getting OEE on each piece of equipment. That's something kind of we've been talking about here in the recent months. How can we ensure that all of our equipment is operating at its, at its full effectiveness? And then the last thing we've kind of been exploring lately is knowing what's happening in our warehousing areas of our business. So we're developing some warehouse metrics and we're trying to think of different ways that we can use Traxxas to know how many how many products we've shipped, how many orders we've fulfilled. So there's there's things that are coming down the road that we haven't actually gotten to, but we're very excited about the possibilities that Traxxas has for us. Travis, those are some great ideas and future functions to take a look at. And Dave, I, I'd love to get your perspective as well, uh, kind of wrapping this all together on critical success factors that a company might look to or may even overlook as they expand uh, an existing operations and performance management solution. You know, framing this from the Bush Brothers story for a second, because it's it's a story that uh, is exciting and we're starting to see in, in more and more companies that we work with, the concept of finding an initial need for a performance management or an operations management solution that may initially start in a deployment as a pilot. So one line, one process, uh, a small subset of data, something like downtime information, even if we're getting a lot of detail from the equipment, and seeing how that solution can grow over time. One thing that can get overlooked as the solution evolves is what happens with the underlying infrastructure to support that. Computing power, what is the server set up to do? What does it do to network traffic within the factory as more and more people are connecting to the system? either for real-time data, operator interfaces, and so forth. That initial scope and spec for the system, even over time if things don't expand at a, at a fast clip, can become outdated. Computing power, computing availability really moves quickly and changes. So one last point I'd leave here when we start talking about success factors is constantly look at what that infrastructure is, that technical infrastructure to support the solution and make sure that it gets the same type of attention as the actual solution itself and how it's growing to ensure that it performs well, it responds well, and that the, the system continues to behave and work in the manner that people that were originally accustomed to and what would be expected. That's some great feedback. And I think that Travis, Mike, and Dave, you've all hit on things that are very important as somebody takes a look at 
how they would look for a software solution, how they would implement it, challenges and considerations to think of as they're implementing it, and then really where to start and how to grow the operations management tool that they choose. So I'd like to thank you all for your feedback, your thoughts, your time, and your consideration, and thank our viewers as well for joining us in this web series. We hope if you haven't had a chance to already that you'll check out episodes one, two, and three, and we look forward to hearing your thoughts and your feedback and questions. Thanks for joining us.